The following is a sports presentation of the University of Nebraska's radio station. Your home of continuous coverage of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, 90.3 KRNU, Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Zach Penrice for Husker Countdown. If moral victories exist, Nebraska certainly had one last weekend in Columbus. The Cornhuskers had a lead over a top 10 opponent on the road for the first time this century and a freshman quarterback who outplayed a potential Heisman candidate. Naturally, a lot of things went right. Ozigbo oh, tries it again, and this time he's in. Nebraska with an early statement here in Columbus. Dobbins stops short, and a three and out on Ohio State's first drive. And Nebraska on the road at the horseshoe has the lead with 15 seconds left in the first half. But with successes come failures, of which the Huskers simply had too many. Ohio State comes after it for good reason. Blocked out of the end zone. Yeah, now looks to throw it and does backwards. That is scooped up and Ohio State's got it. Poor decision from Martinez. Martinez down the seam off of the hands of Spielman. And Martinez is going to wish he had this one back. Eddie Spielman might be thinking, oh. Ooh, alligator I mean, armed it a little bit, huh? It's right there. Those are the plays you talked about, the plays you have to make to, to beat Ohio State in their house. So do moral victories exist? If they do, Scott Frost and his young quarterback, Adrian Martinez, certainly don't believe in them. We've had some great moral victories this year, and those don't count for anything. You know, I don't believe in moral victories. Our team fought. We can play with any team in the country. All that's left is real victories, of which Nebraska has two in nine games. However, it's hard not to notice the improvements that have been made by this team in just over a month since that embarrassment in Michigan. The great thing coming out of the locker room, our guys are upset. Our guys are, are mad that they didn't win the football game. This was a long time coming and a lot of things had to happen to get a team that's gonna go fight a top 10 team like that. Six weeks ago, we went to Ann Arbor and played a team like that. Peoples Jones, he's got incredible speed. And there it is, and there he goes. He will beat them to the pylon, touchdown! We had no chance. Now seeing how the guys are banding together and fighting and going blow for blow with a team like that, I'm excited at the same time that I'm really upset and disappointed we didn't find a way. They'll look to counter that disappointment with a strong showing today. Their opponent is Illinois, a four and five team that fired their defensive coordinator just over a week ago and promptly won over Minnesota shortly thereafter in a dominant 55 to 31 victory. The Fighting Illini feature a quarterback that you just might remember. On the white team quarterback, number six, A.J. Bush. He's a left-hander. A.J. Bush is the Illinois starting quarterback and a former Nebraska Cornhusker. Although he only appeared in a spring game for Nebraska, there are still many guys on this team that remember him well, including junior linebacker Muhammad Barry, who spent his recruiting trip to Lincoln with Bush, a visit that has everything to do with Barry ending up with the Huskers. AJ uh, helped recruit me here. He was my host. He was a big part why I came here. He brought me here, basically, where you play someone that you know. Uh, you know, we used to talk smack to each other all the time when we went um, against each other. So to face them and uh, to get a good, if I, when I get my opportunity, I'm going to make it uh, known that I'm there. The culture in Lincoln is changing. And can you believe it? There's only three games left this season. A changing culture that can now be seen and felt has some seniors on the team already dreaming of more eligibility. The best thing I heard all week is, is one of my young guys came to me and told me that one of the old guys told him that he was so jealous of the young guy that he was going to get to be around here for three more years because of what the players can feel is happening and where they know it's going. That's great to hear that even a senior going out the door wishes he could stay here with us a while longer and with his team a while longer. If this many people are acting this confident around a 2-7 and seven football team, it starts to rub off on those around you. There is no doubt the Huskers are getting better, but without ball eligibility, what is left for them to play for? How about the seniors? The guys that won't get to be here if and when it does get to where Scott Frost says it can. 
Husker Countdown starts right now. Andrew Bunch takes the snap, throws it out to Spielman. Spielman has some room. Touchdown! Diving for the end zone, J.D. Spielman. On that beautiful screen pass, well-designed play. Montez has it. Gets pressure, gets rushed. Khalil Davison on the sack for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. It's going to be caught by Stanley Morgan midfield down the right boundary. 35-30, Morgan to the 20, to the 15, dancing down the sideline. He'll salsa his way in for six. Handoff over left guard. Ozigbo plunges into the end zone. Husker lead. It's 9-7. to seven. Pass is going to be caught for a touchdown by Nebraska by Jack Stoll, the tight end. Martinez gets the snap. Washington again. Breaks the tackle across the five. And he's in for the touchdown. Maurice Washington with a four-yard scamper. And Nebraska is up multiple possessions in the fourth quarter. It's 26-14. to 14. Hornibrook sets his feet. Still looking, dances, out boundary, pass intercepted. It's by Aaron Williams. It's a pick six in the Nebraska Blackshirts return the favor against Wisconsin. It's a 12-yard INT return for points, and the Huskers are a point away from a tie game. Broadcasting live from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, 90.3 KRNU proudly presents Husker Countdown. Got an angel on my shoulder and my star for leaves, but my 